now with CNN safety analyst and former FAA safety inspector David Susi. First of all, I, I'm never going to take off my seatbelt anymore on an airplane, <laughs> even no. for a few seconds, uh, especially if I'm sitting near the window. There are so many questions about, you know, how in the world does this happen? And it, does it come down to maintenance or manufacturing? I mean, what's your take on this? Well, there's a couple of things that need to be answered before we answer that question. Uh, as Pete was saying, it is a, a door plug, if you call it that. It can be used for maintenance. It can be reconfigured. The aircraft can be reconfigured, as he said, with a higher pitch seating to utilize that door later. So the structure is there. It's important to point out that this failure was not a structural failure of the fuselage. If you remember, uh, you may not remember, but uh, the Aloha Airlines accident was a 737. That was many, many years ago and several generations of aircraft ago. Now that was a structural failure of the fuselage itself. This fuselage is a composite structure and I don't see any evidence of the fuselage itself being structurally damaged. This is a failure of the either the installation or the mechanical build of the that door itself. So uh, that's where I would start looking right away is those fastening points. You can see in the photos, if you look very closely, there's four little attachment points. Those attachment points that stick out are where the door is fastened to the fuselage. And you can see that those are intact. So the first place I would look is how was it secured? Was it actually secured properly? The other thing I would look at is, was there some maintenance where the seats had just installed, where the, was the configuration recently changed? Because when they change the configuration of the seating, that door does come out for maintenance access so that they can get all that done. And then the, the door is replaced onto the fuselage. So that's the first place I would look is, where, when was that door last accessed? Did it come from the factory that way? It's unlikely, because if it did, then that door would have come off a long time before now in its initial flights. It's been flying uh, for about 10 weeks now, and it's, it would be strange that it suddenly failed like this. It's to me like the mounts are intact. Yeah, flying for about 10 weeks, received its uh, certificate of airworthiness on October 25th. So just a couple of months ago, with that context that you believe that this is something relating to the installation of this unique aircraft, what's your thought on the uh, grounding of the entire 737-9 um, uh, uh, fleet within uh, Alaska Airlines? And do you think it's necessary to do that with these planes that are owned and operated by other airlines? Well, I would start by looking at what it takes to do an inspection. I would not fly any of these aircraft again that have that door until they've been inspected thoroughly. Do you need to make sure that they come off? So what that entails is the interior, pa interior panel needs to be removed. And then inside of there, you'll check each of the bolts, the mounting bolts for that door plug, because it's not actually an opening door. It has to be removed. So I would check each of those each of that mounting, the, the torque or the, the amount of pressure on each of the bolts that holds that in place needs to be verified. Once you do that, then I would return the aircraft to service because it doesn't appear to me that there's any structural damage on the fuselage itself. I think that would be sufficient to return everything to service, but that does definitely have to be done before these aircraft fly again. You know, we're talking about 737 nines right now and um, the other 737 MAX planes that we've become very familiar with is a 737-8, um, especially that Lion Air crash uh, where it plunged into the ocean. I'm just curious to know, like, can you lump it all into one in terms of um, these planes being problematic, David? Well, it's, it's difficult to do that from my perspective as a safety investigator because uh, when you see issues like this, it's easy to to presume that it crosses everything and that it's it just makes everything unsafe. So, and in the in the era of caution, yes, you ground all the aircraft and you look at them. But I, you do need to know as well in perspective. I've been involved as well with a lot of the investigations of the Boeing aircraft, the Max 8. I went up and flew the, the simulator after the fact, after they replaced the software. So you have to take individual things on their own merit and see what they ha what happens. Uh, the fleet grounding is a cautionary measure and it's good, it needs to be done, but it's important that we don't you know, broadly say, well, this airplane's bad or that airplane's bad. Every airplane has its issues, whether it's Boeing, whether it's Airbus, whatever it might be, they have their own issues to be dealt with and they have to be dealt with one at a time. 
to categorically say this airplane's bad or that airplane's bad, I don't think I would go there. Although I would say that Boeing has had its deal of troubles and, and will continue to for a while, I think, um, unfortunately. Uh, but they have uh, improved their safety systems and how they look at things and how they do it. But is it enough? Has it changed their culture enough to where these things stop happening? Uh, evidence would say otherwise. Yeah, yeah. David Susi, appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you very much.